This is part 13 of the basic Python programming tutorial for new and intermediate Blender users. I'm using version 2.63a, but probably towards the end of the year I'll bump up to 2.64. I'm experimenting with it already. So this was the uh, original file that we were looking at from uh, lesson 7. We were plotting the plane around the circle and we got halfway around the circle to the pi location or the pi angle of measure. We started incrementing the location of the plane in the z direction like this and so what we're going to do we're going to take the information from the last couple of lessons we we're modifying object locations and mesh data and we'll kind of integrate it all with this and then we can really start moving forward but for the moment let's step back just for a second and go look at that other file just for a moment all right so we're going to go open that up and that was number 13. Now notice when I come in here there's one thing that you might run into every once in a while and this see this is red this little button it says external text is out of sync resolve the conflict well that's because I had changed uh, the name what did I do I think they changed the name of the directory I changed the name of the directory I changed something associated with this file because remember we had saved this file increment for first vertex.py out to the hard drive if you wanted to use it as a separate file. So when I click this, it gives options. I can either reload it from the disk, which I don't want to do because that would have been the old file, or I can save to the disk. So I'll save this version to the disk. And what is the uh, Make text internal separate copy. Well, I have a separate copy in another text block just in case it's the wrong one, but I'm going to save it to the disk. That resolves the conflict there. Let's make sure this is still the same. The last thing we were looking at was, yes, the string cone, finding the cone, that was it. All right, so then I have another, I'll just open another text block just for a second to verify that. So here's an empty block. I'll open the text block. And now it's in a separate text block. And it looks all good there. All right, so you might run into that issue every once in a while. So now I can unlink this one. And then I had a spare copy over here in well, that one, I can unlink text01, and I can unlink text, which is the spare copy I had lying around just in case. And here's the operator list. I'll just leave that in there. And so now I have a good copy of this text in a file as well as saved as part of this blend file as well. All right, so now we're going to go back and get the new tutorial, which is a copy of... Uh, Lesson 7's tutorial, except in this case, what I'm going to do is I've renamed it to be main design. All right, you can name it whatever, but sometimes I'll put main for the things or something distinguishing to tell me that this is the primary piece of code that I'm running. But like I had mentioned in a couple tutorials back, what's really interesting about Blender is you can kind of use these text blocks as uh, they kind of they become their own little functional blocks as well, kind of storing methods or functions within them. Methods and functions are kind of the same word. Modern terminology uses a method. Older days we used to call them functions. But in here, I can let's see what else I have in here. So that's the only one in, that's in the scene. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a new text block in here, and then I'm going to open up that one that we have saved to the directory from the other file. All right, so that was the one where the BPY mesh find the cone the whole nine yards. Well, notice it's not a really applicable to this scene because there's nothing with cone in it. And if I come over here to this one here, main design, and if I if I press one, I just get the layer one, which is really helpful. I'm going to press B. I'm going to delete these guys real quick and delete those. And then I'm going to hold shift and press 3, and that brings layer 3 back into the scene. So you, you can just use the number keys to switch between layers. And then when I run it, you're going to see that this next routine, there it is, it's in here. I'm going to put my layer back in here. And it doesn't, this one, this code didn't really come into play. It's just there in the scene. If I happen to save the file now, this will be saved within the scene. The beauty of it being in here is then I can come over into here and all these happen to be called plane, plane dot zero zero whatever based on when we, they got loaded into the scene. So we'll look at that real quick. When they were loaded in, um, let's see down here, right here we added a plane to the scene like this and 
here's where we got the object, get the active object like this. But just by default, it, it's naming it on the fly as it goes. Well, that's one thing I don't necessarily want. We're going to change that in this lesson as well. But since it has named it incrementally, then we can actually we'll access this stuff that way. And we'll go get the other file real quick. And when we're in here, let's just change this code real quick. All this is doing is, like before, which raising things up and moving the mesh. And so let's do it. In fact, let's just call this call this plane. We'll just change this to plane. Plane. And we'll put the index back to zero, like this. And we run the script. Holy cow. We ran the script. <laughs> oh, it moved the plane up too. So <laughs> No, it moved the plane up, and you can see it took the first vertex of the plane, and it moved it. So it kind of goofed it up and made it hard to see what it was, made it difficult to see what actually happened in the scene like that. Because that was named plane as well. Or, you know, forget that. I'm going to press Control Z. Go put it back to where it was. Oh, no, it's Control Z again. Let's see if I can put it back. Mm, okay, there it is there. So just for the moment, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to call this ground like that so it can't find that there I'm going to rerun it and oh I control Z it back out so control Z my cone to play in also so rerun it and let's see Huh? Plane. Plane. Starting. Oh, didn't change that either. These programmer errors. All right, let's do it again. Run them. So, all right, so there they go. So it gets all the planes in the scene like that. All right. And it's skewing them as they go. All right, so that's all good and well. But the cool thing about it is that it's just its own little block of code doing its own thing. And it's irrelevant to this piece of code back here. So maybe it, gets an, it gives you some ideas as to how to work, and that's how I work all the time. It's just really cool. You can have boatloads of text blocks in here all doing specific things. Maybe one text block, say for instance, um, you know, normally say I'm in the code here and I'm designing just within the object editor like this, and I pick this, or maybe I pick a bunch. I'll just say I pick a bunch like this and I want to rotate them all in their own object center right so I change this over here to their individual origins and then I rotate them RZ rotate them all in Z and they're all rotating on their own object centers like that okay well I could write an equivalent type of code and put it in its own text block and maybe that text block does nothing but pick certain objects and rotate them on their own origins and then I have those saved in here and anytime I want to run it I could be designing and working in here, then I just click over to that text block and I run the script. It's very powerful. It's kind of like having, you know, macros built in, but much more powerful. All right, so now let's get back to this main program right here where we had the colors and we added the plane. But down here, let's see, where is this guy? Let's actually let's just expand this over a little bit more so you can see it. Uh, so I can see it. So somewhere in here I want to change the name. So what the heck happened there? B, I must have pressed. <laughs> what is that? I'm going to control Z here. See what I see what I did. Huh. I must have accidentally pressed something when my mouse was in that window. Alright, so there's the active object. So we're going through the while loop. We're going through this while loop. And then we were getting the object based on this object that we just added. And then that's how we change the color based on the active object like that. But then it has this default name like this. So all we're going to do is since this routine is running a little bit long, this tutorial. So let's see if we can change this name. So the name of it is get active object because that's getting it from bpy.context. Dot selected objects. 
So I'm going to change the name on the fly, see if we can. Get active object dot name. And it equals, and I'm going to give it something else. I'm going to call it, uh, what are we going to call this fountain? These, because these are going to supposed to be fountains at some point. So fountain, and I'll give it a space there like that. And I'll put uh, plus, and then we're going to give it a number. We'll get a number or something to identify what it is. Well, oh well, this this will work okay for now. But let's see. We'll give it outside theta and theta because that's really what we're doing. We're we're going around the circle, and as we're going around the circle, we're going around another circle. So, so I'll just do that. I'll say is I'll take the string value of outside theta, and uh, I'm going to say plus. We'll just do this. I need a little space in there. Plus string value of theta, like that. So that should take, for each plane that's being added, it's going to give it a name, fountain, plus the value of outside theta, and it's going to append the value of the inside theta angle that we're running, I think. I think. I'm guessing, I think. No, this should, really. All right, so I'm going to press 1, get back to here, take these, I'm going to get these out of the scene, and then I'll... Shift press three. Now I have it back to my regular scene like this, and then let's run the script and see what happens. So there it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna change that so three doesn't go away like that. So there they are. And let's see what the name of the. Right, well, we can find out. This is here's x, y, and z. So we're traveling around the circle x, y, and z. So the first this should be the first circle right here because here's positive x, here's positive y, so that should be the first one, see what that is. So fountain 0, 0.0, 0, 0, and this should be, yep, 0, 0.0, 0, 0.785 radians round, and then 1.57 radians, I think you get the idea, 2.356 radians, and 3.14 radians around the circle, and this should be, you know, there's that. This should be 4.71 radians. This is going around the circle, as you see. And then this should start at 0 0.7 I5 radians up here. So it would be this one there should be 0 0.785 and 0. And it is. And this should be 0 0.785 and 0 0.785. So at least from my perspective, that gives me a clear way in my mind how to kind of keep track of the of each one of those individual objects as I want to go. Now maybe for you, maybe you want to work in degrees, you can convert those degrees or something like that, or you just want to give it another name. You, you could say, you could maybe call it Fountain Northeast Northeast. And this location might be, you know, Fountain North, and that one might be South. So Fountain North South one might be another way to identify it. All right, but at least we have it as a particular name. So then when you go into another block over here, then instead of hunting down a plane, we'll just hunt down fountain. Fountain, well, no, let's do this fountain. Uh, okay, let's do this fountain. If it's 0, 0.0, 0, 0, 0.0, I think it was like that might be a starting term. So that really theoretically should just start picking up should only move that one up and skew that one, I think. All right, let's run it. There it is. So that's how I can access what I want, when I want. And so now you can see how we're going to really be able to make fountains because we can blast particles from whatever thing we want, move things where we want, and change the mesh in the whole nine yards. And for those of you who are mathematically inclined or who program in other languages, well, this might be the last lesson you need. For those of you who don't have much of a math background, I would highly recommend that you continue because what really sets the pros apart in animation is the guys who, and the gals, I'm not excluding you, I assure you, is the ones who know math and science and engineering, things like that, physics. Those are the, these are the people that can really make animation shine for Hollywood and things of that nature. And otherwise, um, you know, you have to settle with you know, kind of keyframe style animations that kind of, that could be good, and keyframes could be really good for like character animations and things like that, but if you're going to be in the programming world, um, 
math and physics and engineering skills are crucial to really you know accelerating and becoming a great animator all right okay well that's it for this lesson and i'll see you in the next lesson